I join my colleague, the, C the SG and the entire team here to thank you for sparing the time to be with us, to relay this, the message we want to pass on to the public. The issue is about our colleagues who are currently incarcerated at, Nag at Nagalama Police Station. They are about 14 in number. And uh, the bizarre events that came up leading to their arrest are really puzzling. It was on the 24th day of this month when our colleagues were paraded at Coloro main grounds there by S operatives. We understand it was on the directive of the Director General ESO Ochoet. And they told lots of lies, lies, blatant lies about what had transpired. In a nutshell, they said they were parading wrong elements that were handed over to them by Kenyan authorities who had been picked from Chisumu there. Truth of the matter is, our colleagues entered Kenya legally. And at an opportune moment, we shall avail you with their documents if they are secured and they can attest to that fact the passport and other travel documents they went through the border point and they were all cleared by the immigration authorities on either side of the border uganda and kenya they were cleared by the authorities here the immigration and also cleared by the immigration authorities in Kenya. And in broad daylight, they moved or traveled to Chisumu. They had been invited by a partner NGO for a one-week conference. It was a training, a one-week training about leadership, governance, communication, and it was organized officially by this NGO, which is partnering with us on a number of programs. And the venue was known. It is Ukweri Pastor, uh, Pastoral, Pastoral Catholic Center, which you can verify. Say church facility. Bukweri Pastoral Catholic Center in Chisumu. That's where the train, the training was organized to take place. Official. And the authorities in Kenya knew about it. And uh, by the mere fact that the authorities in Uganda permitted them to cross over to Nairobi. They were fully aware of what they were going to do in Nairobi. In Chisumu, rather, not in Nairobi. Chisumu. The governor of Chisumu was aware. All the, all the authorities in Chisumu cleared this, this uh, uh, training session. And as, as I said, the training session was about governance, was about communication, was about leadership. And the program was there. So all this was known. And I'm sure if the intelligence here, if they were uh, alert, they would have known what these people had gone to do in Nairobi. But, oh, sorry, what they had gone to do in Chisum. So, 
hell broke loose on the night of 23rd. It was actually past midnight. I should say 24th, because it was in the wee hours of 24th. When a combined force of S operatives, some few Kenyan authorities, police from Uganda, and other unknown security agencies, unidentified rather, stormed the hotel where they were staying. They broke into their rooms. It was past midnight, like half past midnight, around 1 a.m. Many of them were found deep asleep and were not given even time to dress up. They were literally kidnapped from their hotel rooms by a combined force of those agencies I've talked about. One by one, they were assembled at a particular point, interrogated, and some of, strangely, even some of the interrogations were conducted in Uganda and Runyankori, Runyakitara, some of the interrogations in Ichisum. And we are told that actually they were involved in terrorist activities. Actually, they were at that particular moment accused of indulging in terrorism, that these were terrorists. They explained themselves. A search was conducted in all their rooms and nothing related to terrorism was discovered. Nothing completed. And at some point, the information we gathered is that the Kenyan authorities seemed to have understood and have appreciated what the team explained to them. But the main first security operatives from Uganda would not bulge, would not relent. They proceeded to bundle all of them onto a truck. And at a breakneck speed, drove them towards the borders of Busia. Around 5 a.m., they crossed back to Uganda, 5 a.m. Again, it was shocking and surprising that they do not use the border point and they do not go through the immigration. As we speak right now, they are considered technically to be in Kenya because they have not been cleared to come back to Uganda. The immigration authorities did not stamp their passports and other travel documents. They were driven straight to SO headquarters here, where they were detained here. And before they were brought here, many of them were tied Kandoya. You know, I don't know Kandoya in English. Kandoya. It's Kandoya. <laughs> they were tied Kandoya. Not, you know Kandoya? Your hands tied behind. Even ladies and everybody, they were tied, their hands were tied behind. Even when they wanted to go and ease themselves, they wouldn't be allowed to do it freely. You can imagine what happened as they had to ease themselves with their hands tied. You can all imagine the ordeal they went through. Those moments. So when they were brought here, 
Again, we understand on the directive of the uh, SO Director General, arrangements were made to have them paraded at Kororo. And that's where they interfaced with you members of the media and they again issued out false statements. The blatant lies I've talked about that these were wrong elements picked from Kenya and that they had been officially handed over by the Kenyan authorities to ESO and the police here, which was not true. What actually happened, as I've stated, it was a kidnap of our colleagues from their hotel rooms in Chisumu and how, and, and, and subsequently transferred back here to, to Kampala. So you recall the statements they issued at Kororo. The team leader, Makoha Samuel, attempted to explain, to narrate the ordeal they had gone through and to give a true perspective of what, of what had transpired. They blocked him. Actually, they cut short the interview. He was about to, to reveal what exactly transpired. And they said, hey, 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 you stop there. They were whisked away. And uh, subsequently dumped at Nagalama police station where they are languishing since that day of 24th. That was Wednesday. And today is Sunday. No charge has been preferred against them. We happen to have visited them at Nagarama, interacted with them. And as I, as I talk right now, still no charge has been preferred against them. We also put questions to the OCCID, who is in charge of that station and who is handling them. He said, uh, they, for them, it's just a matter of keeping them in custody. That their file is at CCID headquarters. And the ESO is responsible for whatever is happening. We talked to the to Magambo. They told us Magambo is the one in charge. But he was also feigning ignorance about this. He was just tossing us up and down. Uh, not revealing exactly what is it that is causing them to be detained at Nagalama. And the, in the entry book at Nagalama, one of our colleagues managed to at least flip through their records there. They indicated that they are rebels. That's what they, they, that's the entry they made in their records there, that these are rebels. You can imagine having people you consider to be rebels, you authorize them to travel to Nairobi, rather to, to Chisumu, you stamped their documents, their travel documents. You can identify each and everybody. They know them. And these are known FDC leaders from across the entire country. They are known. Many, some of them are members of NEC. And this is an official program which was not handled clandestinely. It was known publicly. So, we take exception of what happened and we strongly condemn the act of our security operatives, mainly ESO, in conducting that invasion. The raid they conducted against our colleagues, storming into their rooms, breaking into their rooms violently and brutally kidnapping them and uh, bundling them on a truck as if they were logs and ferrying them directly to ESO. Generally, the manner they have been treated, the ordeal, the, the, the dehumanization, the torture, which is against our constitution and other municipal laws, as well as international instruments like the Convention Against Torture, the Rome Statute, and many other instruments. 
that prohibit inhuman and degrading treatment, that prohibit torture, that prohibit illegal detentions, and so on and so forth. We want to state unequivocally that our colleagues are innocent. None of them got involved in any subversive activity. None of them. We want again to be on record that if they are talking about rebellion or subversive activities or terrorism, we, the leaders, are the ones who authorized them to travel and participate in that program. To go to Chisum, we are the ones who organized it. So, that by implication presupposes that we are also culpable because we are here and I want to be on record. It was a naked program, naked program which was duly organized here in the four corners of our boardroom here where we sat as leaders and agreed to have this program and we sent these delegates for training in leadership, governance and communication. So we are responsible for whatever they did. Collectively, we are responsible for that program. So if they are to charge them with the treason, to charge them with the terrorism, or any subversive activities, we are all here. Get all of us. We are all here. Because with the treason, of course it cannot be masterminded by just a handful of those individuals. Maybe they are suggesting that the plot was hatched here and those had started, I mean, our colleagues had started on the execution mission. Or they can charge us with the misprison of treason because I've, I've revealed to you, we are privy to this. We know, we knew, and we, we know what they were involved in. And we are the ones who organized that program as the FDC leadership here at Katonga. So the other thing is about the kidnap, the invasion orchestrated by the ESO Director General here and his team. It's illegal. Actually, it's an affront to the territorial integrity of Kenya. In international law, you are not allowed to cross borders and pick anybody just like that and whisk them back to your country. That's abuse of the integrity, territorial integrity of Kenya and abuse of international law. Yes, we understand we have extradition agreements with many countries, Kenya inclusive. But even if you are to extradite somebody, even if you are to, treat, to deport them, you have to follow the due process. It has to even involve a judicial process. The Extradition Act of Uganda is very clear. The one of Kenya is very clear. The ministry in charge of all those issues must be involved. A request must be made by the government of Uganda here. It goes to the sister ministry, the other side. Then the a judicial process commenced and it culminates into a warrant. And after court has actually confirmed these are fugitive criminals, because that is the word in the Extradition Act, fugitive criminal. It, has, it must be confirmed by courts of that particular jurisdiction that these are fugitive criminals who should be extradited. And even the ex ex exceptions to deportation and extradition, if it's a political offense, you cannot be extradited. That is the law. If it is murder, if you commit other offenses like rape or whatever, but if it's a political case, a, a case of political nature, more so in this particular case, where you are just 
on a fishing expedition to get a charge to be preferred against the people you have, you have kidnapped, you cannot deport them. So we challenge the Director General Esso here. We challenge the entire government of Uganda and the authorities in Kenya to produce the extradition order that indeed confirmed that these are fugitive criminals. And it was issued by court. There has to be a court that issues a deportation order. They must have been arraigned before court and the court issues a deportation order or an extradition warrant. And they must be certified fugitive criminals. All those processes were never followed. In, in, in execution of extradition agreements, states have to follow a, a well-known or unentrenched principle of pactum sunt savanda. You must respect that agreement you have executed internationally. It's a well-known doctrine within international law. The doctrine of pactum sunt savanda. So we have an, an extradition agreement between Uganda and Kenya. Now here we are. A partner state within the African East African community has violated that doctrine of Pactam Sunt Savanda by attacking the territorial integrity of a sister nation, of a neighboring country. And this is where we stand now. Kenya is on test now. We want to hear it from Nairobi, from Kenya. What is their position on this matter? We want to hear it from them. And pretty soon, either tomorrow or the following day, we intend to raise this matter with the Kenyan authorities. We want to issue a protesting note. We are going to, definitely, we are going to issue a protesting note to Nairobi, through their embassy here, on this matter. Because they had a duty after the meeting our colleagues in their, within their territory, they had the duty of giving them all the protection they needed, they required. It's, I've said, it's an abuse of international law for a state like Kenya to allow foreign forces to come and pick individuals from within your own territory who are under your control, who are under your protection, to pick them, to kidnap them late, deep in the night, and they just drive them away without even following any due process. So we are going to issue a protest in to Kenya. We want them to come out clean on this, to explain to us. They, want, they have to come clean on this, to explain to us, to explain to the nation how all this happened, these transgressions happening with their acquiescence. And this should send signals to all of us. All of you, we are not safe. You may think it is happening to our colleagues here today, but we are all not safe. How can one be picked from a hotel room past midnight and you are just driven, just anyhow like that, into wilderness? Do the authorities in Kenya know exactly what, is, what happened to the people they allowed to be carried away, taken away, driven away? Do they know? Don't they have a duty of care to establish exactly what happened to these individuals, whether they have been prosecuted or not? We also demand that our colleagues should be released unconditionally because they are continued detention is an illegality. They are in illegal detention. Beside the violations that have been perpetrated by the state in, a, in carrying out this operation, they have gone beyond the 48 hour rule. Uh, rather, they have violated the 40 hour rule. They have gone be, beyond the 40 hour, 48 hours they allowed to have somebody in the custody. Since 24th, today is the 28th. Since 21st, they are having them in custody. Today is 28th. 
how can you violate the constitution with reckless abandon, just like that? The constitution dictates that produce, no, first and foremost, you tell one, you tell them, upon arrest, immediately upon arrest, that's what the Bill of Rights say in Article 28 of the Constitution. It commands that within, immediately upon arrest, inform the people you have arrested or whose liberties you have curtailed of the charges they have against them, you are preferring against them. That never happened. Even as they keep, they keep them right now in, the, in their cells there at Nagaram, they have not been told the offenses they, have, they are preferring against them. We hear it in corridors. They are murmuring, which case do we have against? Do we handle it legally? Do we handle it politically? You can imagine. How low can we? How how low are we sinking as a nation? To 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 those levels, where you are treating human beings as beasts. We have already said the Article Forty Four of the Constitution is illusory which makes the right against inhuman and degrading treatment and torture absolute. It's one of those rights which are absolute, which are non derogable, which you cannot digress from. The protection against torture, protection against inhuman and degrading treatment. In a nutshell, dehumanization is abhorrible, is condemned under our law. But it's happening with reckless abandon. The same way it is happening, to many of these youth who are protesting against corruption. And I want to end on that note that Ugandans, we should wake up and stand for our rights. Now you have this 40, 40 of our colleagues who are, whose fate is not known, but they are still incarcerated. And you have so many score of youth and many, many activists who are, who are protesting against Corruption superintended over by the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Monk. Is it a crime for one to demand for the resignation of Anita Monk? Yet General Seven himself said, ah, ah. He has evidence that Parliament is involved in corruption. So whoever now, whoever brandishes a placard, Anita must resign. You are arrested. Whether you are a brother, whether you are what? You are picked. So even if I do it at my home, even here, if I get a placard, Anita Mongo must resign. Come. They kidnap you. We must bring this to an end. These transgressions. I thank you.